Hey, so I was talking to a potential client and they asked me, how long does it take to raise the money that I need to raise for my business? And you know, my usual answer to that is six to 12 months, but you know, I've definitely seen um, it take less than six months. I've seen it take a lot longer <laughs> than a year. Uh, so I was thinking about, you know, what are some factors that go into how long it takes you to raise money for your business to reach your fundraising goal? You know, I've just worked with so many entrepreneurs over the years, uh, and I've seen so many different um, uh, things that have happened, you know, entrepreneurs who, my cat is right here, um, entrepreneurs who um, didn't end up raising any money at all. Um or, you know, raise money quite quickly, different amounts. I've also raised money myself. I'm raising money right now. Um, I've raised about almost $2 million for this project. And to be totally honest with you, it's taken me about three years <laughs> to get this far. Um, so I wanted to share some factors that I've observed that will affect the timeline in which that it takes you to raise the money you need for your business. So uh, number one is the urgency. So um, if you need the money urgently and you're totally passionate about your business and you want to make it work, you're going to probably raise it pretty fast because you're going to feel so much of a compulsion to make it happen because it's like make or break. <laughs> My cat is hitting me with his tail. Uh, it's make or break. Um, and so you're going to make it happen. And, you know, honestly, I think part of the reason why it's taking me so long to raise money for the project I'm working on right now, I mean, there's many reasons it, it's ended up costing more than I thought it would. And I've, you know, new information has come in, but it's for this building. And, you know, I told myself, well, if the building just sits there for a few more months, you know, that's not the end of the world. It'll just take a little longer before we can actually, you know, complete the project. And I think that does, oh my gosh, <laughs> that was my cat. I think that does slow me down because, um, because I don't have that sense of urgency. Uh, I do have a sense of urgency, but it's not truly urgent. Like it's not the end of the world if it takes me a few more months to finish this raise. So that's one thing. Um, and it's hard to control for that because you're going to be honest with yourself about how urgent it truly is. Um, another thing that uh, is a factor that affects how long it takes you to raise money is um, how much time you put into it. Um, I've told people in the past, and I kind of think this is true, that if I locked myself into a room for one month with nothing to do except raise money, I could have probably raised all the money in that month. Um, you know, if I put all my time and energy, not just time, but also like mental um, focus on raising money, I would just sit there all day and make phone calls and send emails and attend online events and do everything I could to connect with potential investors. So the amount of time you put into it on a day-to-day -day basis is a big, big factor. And of course, what you do with that time is really important because if you're, if the time, if you're spending a ton of time on it, but what you're spending your time on is, you know, perfecting your elevator pitch by practicing it a million times and you know not actually talking to potential investors then that's time that's not going to really lead to you raising the money you need to raise you have to spend the time you know not that you don't want to spend time on things like making your pitch deck look nice and whatever but um you want to spend like 90 percent of your time actually talking to potential investors um then the next one is the willingness to put yourself out there and get uncomfortable because oftentimes when you're asking for investment, it can be uncomfortable. It can feel, especially if you've never done it before, it can feel scary and just getting the words out of your mouth to say, hey, are you interested in investing um, can be scary. So you have to have to really 
be, move quickly, you have to be willing to get outside your comfort zone and get those words out of your mouth as much as possible and just do it as many times a day as you possibly can. The next one, to be totally honest, I hate to say this one, but it is who your connections are. Um, and when I say connections, I don't necessarily just mean connections to um, professional investors like venture capitalists, people who run big foundations or family offices or things like that. What I really mean is your connections to people that share the passion that brought you to do your business in the first place. So it could be just your customers. It could be people that are in the same community that know what you're doing and think it's awesome. Um, so the more connections you have that share the passion that underlines that underlies your business, that is going to make it so much easier. Like if you're just starting out in a new field and you don't really, you haven't really talked that much about that field before with other people, you haven't like created, um, you know, content about that issue and that topic. You haven't attended conferences and events um, that address that topic. It's going to be much harder than if you've been in that world for a while. Maybe, you know, ideally, if you already have customers, um, oftentimes your customers are going to be not just potential investors, but also cheerleaders that are going to bring other people along. Um, the next one, and this one I'm not totally sure about, but I, and I kind of hate to say it because it could be a limiting belief, but I do think the amount of money you're raising is a factor because um, honestly, if you're raising like $5 million as opposed to 500,000, it's probably going to take you a bit longer. Now, no, some people will disagree. They'll say it's actually easier to get one check for a bigger amount than for a smaller amount, but if you're raising money in the way that I advocate for, where you stay in control, you set the terms, and you're raising money from a diverse group of investors who aren't necessarily, you know, professional investors that have preconceived ideas about how they want to invest and they want control, um, the checks that you're going to get might be small. Um, each check. So for example, I'm raising money right now for this project. I've raised almost $2 million. The check sizes I've gotten range from 10,000 to, um, 300,000. And that I'm thrilled that I got that 300,000 and that took some time to get that 300,000. So, um, you know, I think it just naturally, it, and I have like 35 investors. So naturally, if you're raising more, it's probably going to take a little bit longer, unless you're raising money in a very different way from different types of investors from the kinds that I advocate going for. Um, the next one is uh, what compliance strategy you choose. So, um, this is your, your securities compliance strategy. So I'm currently raising money using a strategy called Rule 506C, and that strategy requires that all of my investors be accredited, which means they must have at least a million dollars in net worth or three hundred or 200,000 in annual income or 300,000 with a spouse. Um, so it's maybe nine to 10% of the population of the US that fits that. And so I'm 90% of the whole country cannot invest in what I'm doing right now, which I totally don't like that, you know, but that's kind of what I'm doing right now. But if you raise money in a way where anyone can invest, it can go much faster because you just have such a bigger audience that you can um, appeal to, to invest. Um, also, if the compliance strategy that you're using allows you to publicly talk about the fact that you're raising money, that also can make it go faster because you don't have to deal with being kind of cagey about the fact that you're raising money to avoid breaking the law. So with the way I'm currently raising money, Rule 506C, I can publicly announce the fact that I'm raising money and I'm, that's, I'm doing that all the time. Everywhere I go, I'm telling everyone, you know, um, just thinking about, you know, someone who I don't know might hear about it and be intrigued. So those are the six factors that I came up with. There may be more, but those are the ones I came up with that I think will have a big effect on 
how quickly you can reach your fundraising goal. So just to recap your, your urgency, the urgency with which you need the money, the time that you devote to it, and that also includes devoting time actually talking to potential investors and not messing around with slides or whatever. And then uh, your willingness to get out of your comfort zone and do it very frequently, like every day. Um, your connections to people who share the passion and, and love your mission, your, the amount you're raising, and your legal compliance strategy. All right, see you later, bye.